Wicked, wicked, wicked. You just feel really calm at the fully lengthened. Wicked, wicked, wicked. The longest road is probably consistency over time. Wicked, wicked, wicked. I see a lot of stuff online, like we keep going over back stuff, but back is, back is probably the difference maker between guys with great physiques and guys with okay physiques. Cause like every, a lot of, everybody looks decent from the front. Everyone has holes from the front, like biceps or pecs or not full, whatever it might be, but everyone develops to the front pretty well, even if they develop imbalances. But like when people turn around to the back, they lose, right? It's like there's, you can tell the difference between a great back and an okay back because they're just pieces missing. So in an effort to like kind of talk people out of this whole method of like locking down and being very rigid on back movement, like it's like the art of like, the art of extension is lost. It's like, well, we don't, we don't go out here. We only come from here and we pull or we create an angle and we pull or we're down here and we, we lock in and we just pull very smooth into like our lat thinking our lat is just like this tiny little piece of our back that just hangs off the edge. And we just work this little part of the muscle, right? We don't understand that like your lat is responsible for extension and driving up through and pulling down will contract your lat fully. Right? So if we don't get the end point and we only get the bottom point and we're only working in this half range, we're only going to develop, like I said in another video, like half a back or a quarter of a back. You're not going to get into those deep fibers and that low lat and developing the entire back because it's a dynamic moving body part. It doesn't move front and back. It can go up and down. It can come from below. It can come horizontal, vertical, whatever we want to do, right? Spreading apart works back. So people need to understand that and stop thinking that like, oh, I'm just going to lock down and hit this one specific area of my back and it's just magically going to grow when you're doing that with like very little load. So everyone wants to harp on me and bitch at me and they think I'd say lower the weight all the time. Like the weight has to go up in order to get that muscle to grow. There's no doubt about that. No one's ever debating that. It's just that guy, people go up too fast and just for the sake of going up and thinking that the weight will make them better and not being able to control or manipulate or really use like connect to that weight. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about like, don't just go up for the sake of going up. Progressive overload doesn't mean you just or do and keep doing it till something happens, right? So it's the same, a lot of back exercises, like people have lost the art form of understanding that like when I hang here, so if I lock into back here and I'm leaning forward, a lot of people start their pull here. So they'll sit down and they'll, they're already extended here. Whereas I want to be in my back already and I want to be able to lock. I'm almost, I have pressure down on the handle and my elbows pushing down and my lats locked up, locked down on my chest up. So I'm locking on lat as I'm sitting here and I'm engaged in my back. And the major key to that is where my chin is. So my chin is pressed back and down. I'm not looking up. I'm not doing this. I'm, my head's pressed back and my chin's down. So I'm creating this lockdown in my back because I'm, my pressure is going back, but my hands are pulling me forward. So I lean forward in this pull. And even if I want to let shoulders ride out, which I don't, but even if I do, I still can get this drop. If you can't do this on a pull in control, the weight's too heavy, drop it. Because if I don't, can't get this momentum and this shut down where I'm dropping my shoulders into my body, I can't do this then where I can lock into this position. I can even open up and come out of this position any way I want because I'm locked in my back. So I'm going to let my lat hands pull me forward. I'm going to drive shoulders down and back and chest up and chest up. So if we don't get this extension where I can be here and I'm able to drop, if I have two hands, imagine I'm showing you so you can see is that I'm trying to be here locked down. I'm trying to drop shoulder and that's what you should be doing for full back extension and back work because the momentum and the rocking back and forth and the driving the chest up will clear that chest up, drop that shoulder, squeeze that back and engage, lift that sternum. So we squeeze back. Everyone can agree that this is my back flexed. Me arched up and swinging my elbows down and squeezing wherever they are. I'm here, I'm flexed, right? It's not here. And I can't start my movement by hanging here. Don't get me wrong. This is going to create an angle where there's no stress on the shoulder and I can keep my shoulders down. No problem because I have leverage on it. My weight, my 300 pounds is leaning back. Whereas this is however many pounds I'm holding in front of me. So I can be here. And then if I'm going to lock here and I'm going to pull into here, 
Yes, I'm squeezing lat. There's no doubt about that, but you're not getting this. So I'm not getting full extension of my lat, which is here. Because everyone who wants to go here does this. And they do this. Because their head placement's wrong. Your head needs to be here. And it can't fall. It's got to be here and drive up through. You've got to fight the resistance going forward, drive up through. If I don't keep my chin back, I can't lift my chest up to start the movement. If my head ducks, I have to throw my head first and then pull. You know what I mean? So people are getting in an effort to like isolate or fix their problems with back. They're trying to break it down into pieces, but those pieces are just pieces. They're not the whole thing. So you can teach someone this hanging shit, whether it's on the Watson over there, whether it's on another, any cable device or whatever, where you lean back and you lock into that. And you can teach them to lock here and squeeze up through. And you're gonna hit lat all day, but you're only gonna hit lat right about here and then the rest of the way. So yes, we're gonna get low lat technically, but we're not gonna get anything where my lat is able to extend up and I'm able to squeeze everything down. So these people that do this and squeeze down here, they can only hold so long before grip gives out and we start losing off lat and we're just stressing shoulder, we have to go back up. And if you're gonna keep that seesaw motion of just rocking into this little range, it's too, much, it's too tense to keep just swinging freely on lat. Whereas here, I'm relaxing my grip, I'm pulling down. I'm relaxing it, I'm pulling down. So even if I hang with one arm here and I create distance here where I'm leaning back, me rocking out, my shoulder's still down, my lat's pulling because I'm engaged in my mid-back. I'm not engaged in my shoulder. I'm, my mid-back is letting, keeping my back and my head back and I'm driving up through, I'm letting out. So when I let out from here, the pressure's still down. I'm still fighting the handle going up and then I'm grabbing up through again. I'm not just going, and the act of rowing is causing that. There's pressure down all the time on my elbow, letting that handle out. I'm dropping elbow down, grabbing lat, not hand, grabbing lat, dragging hand down to get that depth. So my pull is my, my elbow dropping, and my shoulder dropping, and my hand squeezing through. You guys are just getting the squeeze through part. That's it. Squeezing through. So yes, you're getting back, but you're not getting that opening of the back. And our opening of the back is what causes that, like, to see my lat from the front. So when I stand here with my shirt off, I'm standing here, I can see my lat around my, around my, my body here. I can see it hanging already. So if you want to be pinched, and do everything pinched, you'll have a pinched back. So you'll be walking around like this and nothing will happen. You won't have this rolled forward because you don't have the dexterity in your shoulders to be able to feel this, to be able to roll my shoulder back. So my lat doesn't sit where it should sit. It sits in here tucked in. And that's why you see these guys walking around. They don't have a back. They're narrow as shit. And they're like this. And then all of a sudden you think when you pose, there's going to be these lats hanging out. It's like if you have lats, you can see them from the front when you're doing nothing. Those are real lats because your body's understood like my lat can relax where my elbow drops into my lat here and rocks out. So it's my, my lat's open now, I'm dropping my elbow into my lat, squeezing up through. I'm moving, I have to move my body to, to get full range. I can't just stay here and go. That's an arm pull. It's an arm pull with a little bit of, a little bit of bicep. And you're just getting a tiny bit of lat, nothing's really happening. But you, being the person who's having trouble feeling your back, that's probably the first time you felt your lat. So you're like, oh, it must be working. And yes, it is. Those are the training wheels. But you gotta take them off eventually and you gotta learn the full range and understand how to get that little feeling you're getting to get it from here and drive up through and here and drive up through. You can't just be here all the time. This is gonna do nothing. It's gonna help you feel, which is very important, but then it's time to open up. It's time to get that weight moving. It's time to reach the full, the full line of the movement, right? We have this extension in our shoulder dropping and getting this feeling of this sinking and driving through things, right? So there's a time and a place for it. That's lots of body movement, but it's also a lot of hand pull, right? Whereas something like this, where I'm very stagnant and I'm able to put my weight here. So I'm creating this lifted up feeling already. A lot of that movement is gonna be just arm pull. So it's gonna be me flexing into mid back and letting out mid back. So I'm letting out around the middle of my back. Like imagine my back, this is my back, this is my head. 
I'm letting out around this mid area. I'm not letting out around my shoulders. I'm not here pulling. I'm coming around and I'm pulling. Even though these handles are not gonna allow me, it's like I'm letting out around and I'm pulling out wide and deep. So my hand is at this level. So my pull isn't to pull up, like pull up into me. It's to create that feeling of that mid back opening. And then I physically push my, push my chest forward and squeeze my shoulders back and then slide and bring my hands in. So if you see your, hopefully my back's big enough that you can see it happen, but we'll find out. <laughs> So if I hang here, I put chest pressure down and I sit my ass back. So my, the weight is on my chest. There's a lot of weight on my chest. I'm going to break hands down and I'm going to come around mid back around my elbow line and I'm going to pull hard up through. So I should be able to flex back because I'm snapping these hands and flexing in. And then I let out wide and drive. So this one, my head's pressed back and my chin's down and it never moves. My body goes, my back squeezes. So I don't rush out of here, I slide. Relax, slide. So from the fully lengthened, it's a hand snap. So from, from the length here, I'm literally, my first movement is this. It's bang, pull my hand. It doesn't look like that because there's weight on there, but that's how violently I'm starting that movement that I'm here, pulling and spreading. So boom, spread driving into here, right? So there's just different ways to pull and different, different starting points and different ways of like beginning the movement, right? For different angles of machines and different things you're trying to do. So on that, we're rocking up and down through the lat, like it's rolling forward and we're driving up through. Here, we're trying to flex into back. So we're literally trying to drive in over here and flex into mid back. The same way we'd hit a shot if we were to pull a rear, rear lat and pull around. It's the same mechanics. And then here, we're just swinging. So the same way we swung over here, now we're swinging low and up here. So it's the same pull. It's just below now, driving up through. So instead of me pulling from above, it's below swinging up through. So our body weight's here. I'm gonna push my head back and chin down. So it looks like I'm looking down, but my head's pressed back as much as it can be. I'm gonna overreach and I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna break elbow first. I'm gonna drive, drive. So I want my shoulders to roll over my chest. I wanna drive my shoulders down and back up through. So you're working different. You can see on those three movements we're working different modalities of the back, whether it's below coming around squeezing through across the across the mid back spreading apart or we're rocking down coming up through driving chest up right so there's three exercises there that show you that being stagnant in a motion like if i pinned this here and i started up tall and i just pulled the here of course i'm going to get engagement but are you going to get enough and are you going to be able to do enough weight to feel that back pull around and grab back because as much as you can control this heavier weight going forward on your lat and grab up through again, that's what makes the difference. It's not like 25 pounds and I'm activating, activating, letting go. Activating, activating, letting go. There's very few guys who have really good backs that are teaching back that way. And you have to ask yourself, is the person showing you that? Do they have a good back? Was that a strong body part for them? Is it something they developed well? If not, time to listen to someone else because they obviously don't know what they're talking about, right? A lot of people do dumbbell rows like off a bench, like people at like garage gyms or whatever you might have. People have been complaining like, show us back stuff with just dumbbells. So I don't really prefer to do a lot of like dumbbell rows. Like I'm a fan of them, but like due to my shoulder issues and stuff, I just, it's not a comfortable thing for me. But a lot of the things I will do is like, if I'm gonna be on a bench, I'm gonna tripod my, my weight. So I'm gonna have a lot of weight on the front hand. I'm not gonna be sitting back here. I don't sit back in pulls. I come up through pulls, right? So if I'm gonna drive, if I was gonna do this here, my hand position would be down on the dumbbell. So a lot of people are gonna pick up, like if you come in here, a lot of people are gonna pick up here. I'm gonna press my hand so my palm's flat back at me. So when I go to pick up, 
my shoulders lock down and I drag up here. So I'll posture up this way, wherever I want to put my foot and drive up, up through. Some people angle their bench so they're getting more length. It's the same thing, it's just creating length here and dropping down up here. That's all it is. So it's snap hand, drive chest, pull to pocket. Don't pull up into, into your lat, right? Another variation. What I prefer is I like to stand and I like to keep, create like, an offset of my shoulders. So my shoulders aren't gonna be here. I'm not gonna be here and try and pull up like this. I'm gonna dip so that I can create length with this shoulders higher than that one. So my, my reach for this dumbbell isn't so drastic. I can lock shoulder down and I can pick up right in here. So I can have length here and I know my weights, I'm leaning on this right side and I'm driving up through. So I'm breaking hand pull, pull. Pull. So I can sit back, I can drive forward, up through, up through. Whatever hand angle you want, in, out, whatever. Whatever allows you to get more shoulder clearance is what you want to do, right? So any of those are fine. This, this is the same as doing it off a rack. This is just a higher angle. That rack's pretty fucking low, to be honest with you. So it's just whatever you prefer. I don't particularly like off a bench because my range is limited by the floor. I'm too close to everything. So that's why you see when the, when the pull happens, it's very quick. So I have to like, I have all this weight spread out and I can get out here, but I can't get much range. Because even here, I can't lift up much because my foot's in the way, my leg's in the way, sorry. I'm driving up and dropping. So if I wanted to do this, I would think about this more like mid upper lat and I would lock on up high and I would just rock here. I would angle out and make it like a row, like a one arm barbell row up through. So I'm working like the meat of my lat. Whereas here I'd want to be more, like, cause I'm able to get that shoulder lower and, and crunch down, make this, make this distance shorter for my lat to pull. So I'm going to make this distance short between my shoulder and my hip and drive up. So I'm going to get long, a long reach cause I'm driving off here and up through, up. Oh. Just find the angle that works for you and that you feel the most pull and the most contraction, right? What do you think about uh, straps and belts for pulls like this? It's fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I use straps for a long time because obviously, I mean, I'm doing a fucking 50 to demonstrate for you guys because I don't, I'm not trying to do this right now. But it's like, if you're going to be doing 100 and, 10, 90, 130 pound dumbbell rows. Like, yeah, like that grip's gonna get pretty fucking tired because this is like absolute, this is like an absolute weight right on my, right here. And I'm trying to move this rock up. So that's not my goal to get up here. It's not snapping and then dropping. It's literally driving my chest up and squeezing back my elbow up through. I'm putting down right where I pick up. So from where I pick up, I'm up and I'm down. Up, down, down. The dumbbell should drop flat if you drop it. Should never bounce around, right? It's like a straight line up and down. But you can use straps if you choose to. I used to, but I think people like working on these lower weights or these kind of pyramiding up to the weight you're gonna try. I think you should try and do as many as you can strapless just to really get that connection to the palm and be able to like really maneuver your body around the pole. And then when it gets too heavy and you understand, still have that connection to the palm. I don't understand people who wrap up or they wrap once and then they leave it loose. So it's just like dangling and you're just snapping. You're just like kind of whipping up a, a weight because it's attached to a wrap. It's like when I wrapped up, I'd be so cinched in that I could turn the, turn the dumbbell like this and I'd be locked like that. So I'd wrap, 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 and then I'd turn, and I'd be completely locked in. So my hand couldn't let go if I wanted. Do you know what I mean? Like, it might loosen a bit, but I'm so locked into that that I'm almost cutting circulation off because that grip's so tight, right? So I, don't, I think wraps should be an assistance to your grip. They shouldn't be a substitute for your grip. 
So like wrap that fucking thing tight and cinch in there. Even pick, like I said, pick, even if I'm wrapped here and I get this here tight here, I'm now I'm gonna rip and roll and really rip and turn that wrist in. So I'm locked into that dumbbell. So the idea of a wrap is to make the, obviously the grip imitate like fucking monster grip on something, like a magnetic grip almost. But we also wanna feel that, that palm action, right? So I wanna feel my palm squeeze pull that weight up. I just don't want to be a dead, a dead hook pulling on something, right? So I like a lot of the, I understand people who have grip issues, people may have forearm issues, like something like going on where it's like a legitimate issue, you can't grip things well. Yeah, wrap how you need to wrap. But guys that are like at the top of their career and like in their prime physically, you shouldn't need to rip, wrap that much, right? Like, and if you do cinch that fucker in and get it tight to the point where your hands like going fucking white because there's no blood getting to it. It's like I'm locked in there, doing my set, letting go, relaxing my hand, right? You're not gonna see a guy who pulls a thousand pounds with like those figure eight straps or regular wraps, who's like just gonna be like loosely like, oh no, he's like fucking ripping down into that and locking and bang. So it's like, it's all connected, right? It's not loose at all. So I just think people like, like I said, if you substitute your grip with a wrap, you're fucking up if you're using it to assist you and like really emphasize that because even that can help you later on because maybe like you're working your way up to 120s on the dumbbell row and usually by like 90s you're starting to wrap well let's try and like get up keep going up without wrapping and then when we get to our top weight then we wrap up a bit the next thing you know like you're getting to your top weight and you're not thinking about wrapping too much because you know that grips there right i can squeeze it's about maneuvering the body around the pole. A lot of people have grip problems. They're starting the pull and they're pulling only with their hand. They're not using their body, the movement of their body to pull up through things and understand that like, I'm not pulling my hand from A to B because that's going to get tiring because I'm just fucking ripping this thing up and down. Whereas if I'm just holding the weight and I don't think about pulling, I'm just holding and moving through my body and dragging it up. It's not as, as not as taxing on my grip. But that'll come with experience and time, right? So you should be able to pick up dumbbells. Like I said, that's why I push, when I pick the dumbbell up, I push the dumbbell into the ground. So I'm literally pushing on it and I grab. So I'm like this. So my hand, my grip won't slip as soon as if I went like this. I'm already strained in my fingers here. So if I push with palm and I squeeze the palm, I almost have a gun grip on it. I'm pulling up through. So I have a lot of tension in this part of my hand because I'm mushed down. So the weight's kind of tipping forward. So I'm just pulling back on it. I'm not trying to claw that fucking thing up 20 times. And then at the end, my forearm's fried. I can't grab the next weight, right? So it's just a matter of finding the grip that works for you. It's just like a good warm up for, to like really get people used to this. Like I used to know really guys with really great backs. I watched them in the gym when I was younger. I don't remember people remember Claude, Claude Gru. I hope that's how you say his name. French guy, just massive bodybuilder. Taurus quads doing a photo shoot one time for Flex. But I do was like, or Jean-Pierre, I think it was Jean-Pierre Fuchs, Fuchs or something like that. I forget who it was. Anyway, my buddy saw him doing this and I saw other people doing this when I was younger too, where a lot of guys would warm up for back and they'd hang. So you could do it off a chin-up bar. You don't have to do it with the weight. But here I just feel like since my weight's balanced, I'm, my shoulders and my lats are pulling out of my body. So I'm relaxing in my hands. So a lot of guys like rotate and hang. And then you can get this, you can start to understand this feeling of like shoulder retraction. So I'm able to rock. So I'm just shrugging behind me and I'm using that momentum and driving down. Pulling up, driving down. So you're gonna see it dramatically in a lot of guys, and a guy who has really good shoulders, I don't, but you're gonna see this dropping so I can drop. Getting used to setting shoulders so that I can pull from here. So if I went to pull, I'm down. Instead of like locking shoulders down, pulling down, it's like, no, use the sequence of the momentum and get used to that dropping feeling where I'm dropping my shoulder behind me. Dropping, dropping. And you'll notice on your pulls, a lot of things will start to come together for you because you understand that shift from length to getting and then pulling. 
right? So it's just something people can do. Like I'd hang on this thing for as long as you could. Rotate around, hang each side, get that shoulder used to dropping, reaching up to your ears, dropping to your shoulder, dropping down to your shoulder blades right here, and dropping. Just setting, letting go up. If you start your if you start your back work with that, you'll I guarantee you, you'll feel more range on different things once you start doing real pulls or even like rows of any kind, you'll feel that kind of set, boom, up through. Where we're driving the chest up, rolling the shoulders down and back. 